when critics say to you that you don't have a case for reservation in terms of need, what do you say to them? Well, I've said what I had to say and uh, the point is that that is not an issue now for us to debate. You mean the chapter is closed? The decision has been taken. Regardless of whether, is a, whether there is a need or not, the decision is taken and it's a closed chapter. Well, so far as I can see, it is a closed chapter and that is why I have to implement what our parliament has Minister, decided. Minister, it's not just in terms of need that your critics question the decision to have reservations for OBCs in higher education. More importantly, they question whether reservations themselves are efficacious and can work. For example, a study done by the IITs themselves shows that 50% of IIT seats for the SCs and STs remain vacant and of the remaining 50%, 25% are candidates who even after six years fail to get their degrees. So clearly, in their case, reservations aren't working. Well, I will only say one thing, that on this issue, it would be not correct to go by all these figures that are being paraded. You mean the IIT figures themselves could be dubious? Not dubious, but I think that is not the last word. Alright, maybe the IIT may not be the last word. Let me then quote you. The report of the Parliamentary Committee on the Welfare for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes, that's a parliamentary body. It says that looking at Delhi University, between 1995 and 2000, just half the seats for undergraduates at the scheduled caste level and just one third of the seats for undergraduates at the scheduled tribe level were filled. All the others went empty, unfilled. So again, even in Delhi University, reservations aren't working. Well, if they are not working, it does not mean that for that reason we don't need them. There must be some other reason why they are not working. And that can be certainly probed and examined. But to say that for this reason no reservation need to be 50 done. 50 years after reservations were made, statistics show, according to the Hindustan Times, that overall in India only 16% of the places in higher education are occupied by SCs and STs. The quota is 22.5, which means that only two-thirds of the quota is occupied. One-third is going waste. It's being denied to other people. As I said, the kind of fears that have been brought out, in my perception, do not re reflect the realities. Realities are something much more. And, of course, there is an element of prejudice also. But these are figures that come from a parliamentary committee. It can't be prejudiced. No, they are your own bodies. The parliamentary bodies. committee has given the figures. But as to why they has not happened, that is another thing. I put it to you that, that you don't have a case for reservations in terms of need. You don't have a case for reservations in terms of their efficacy. Why then are you insisting on extending them to the OBCs? <laughs> I don't want to use that word. But I think your argument is basically fallacious. But it's based on all the facts available in the public domain. Those are facts which I said need to be gone into with more care and what lies behind those facts, why this has not happened, that also is a fact. Alright, let's approach the issue of reservations differently in that case. Reservations means that a lesser qualified candidate gets preference over a more qualified candidate solely because in this case he or she happens to be OBC. In other words, the upper castes are penalized for being upper caste. No, nobody is penalized and uh, that is a factor which we are trying to address and I think the Prime Minister will be talking to all the political parties and will be putting forward a formula which will see that nobody is penalized. I want very much to talk about that formula. No, but before we come to talk about how you're going to address concerns, let me point one other corollary. Reservations also gives preference and favor to caste over merit. Is that acceptable in a modern society? The perception of a modern society, I don't think fit India entirely. You mean yes. India is not a modern society, therefore can't claim to be treated as one? It is a modern society, emerging as a modern society, but the modern society's parameters do not apply 
to a large section of the people in this country. Let me quote Jawaharlal Nehru, a man who you personally admire enormously, who on the 27th of June 1961 wrote to the chief ministers of the day as follows. I dislike any kind of reservations. If we go in for reservations on communal and caste basis, we will swamp the bright and able people and remain second rate or third rate. The moment we encourage the second rate, we are lost. And then he adds pointedly, this way lies not only folly, but disaster. What do you say to Jawaharlal Nehru today? Well, Jawaharlal Nehru was a great man in his own right. And not only I, but everyone in India except a few. But you're just about to ignore his advice? No. Are you aware that it is Jawaharlal Nehru who introduced the First Amendment Regarding OBC? Yes, and I'm talking about Jawaharlal Nehru in 1961 when clearly he had changed his position. He said, I dislike any kind I of don't reservations. Think one could take Panditji's position at any point of time and then overlook what he had himself initiated while the constitution, after the constitution was. Finished. So, am I then to understand that regardless of the case that's made against reservations in terms of need? Regardless of the case that's made against reservations in terms of efficacy, regardless of the case that's made against reservations in terms of Jawaharlal Nehru, you remain committed to extending reservations to the OBCs. Well, I said because that is the will of Parliament. And yeah. I think common uh, decisions that are taken by Parliament have to be honoured. Then let me ask you a few basic questions. If reservations are going to happen for the OBCs in higher education, what percentage of reservations are we talking about? No, that I can't say because that has yet to be decided. Could it be less than 27%? Well, I can't say anything on that. I have told you in the very beginning that at this point of time, it is not possible for me to... Quite right. But if you can't say, that also means that the figure is not decided. No. The figure will be decided. It's not decided yet. It's not decided yet. And therefore the figure could be 27, but it could be less than 27. Well, I don't want to speculate on that because, as I said, that is a decision will be taken by Parliament. All right. Yes. Whatever the figure, one thing is certain, that when the reservations for OBCs happen, the total quantum of reservations will go up in percentage terms. Will you compensate by increasing the total number of seats in colleges, universities, IITs and IIMs, so other students don't feel deprived? Well, that is one of the suggestions that has been made and is being seriously considered. Does it find favour with you as Minister for HRD? Well, whatever suggestion comes, we are committed to examine it. What is you may be committed to examine it, but do you as Minister believe that that is the right way forward? That could be one of the ways, not only the only way, but that could be. What are the other ways? I don't know. That is for the Prime Minister and the but other ministers. One way decide. forward would be to increase the total yes, number of seats. The problem is that as the Times of India points out, we are talking of an increase of perhaps as much as 53%. Given the constraints you have in terms of faculty and infrastructure, won't that order of increase dilute the quality of education? I, I would only make one humble request. Don't go by the Times of India or the Indus Times about faculty, infrastructure, because they are trying to, what you call, focus on an argument which they have made. Okay, I won't go by the Times of India. Let me instead go by Mr. Sukhdev Thurat, the chairman of the UGC. Yes, that is, but that can be addressed. He points out that already today at higher education levels, that's all universities, IITs and IIMs, there is a 1.2 lakh vacancy number, 40% of which are in teaching staff. The IIT faculties themselves point out that they have shortages of up to 30%. So given those two constraints, can you increase the number well, of that seats? That can be addressed, I am saying. That shortage can be taken care of. But it can't be taken care of in one swoop. It will take several years to do well, it. Well, I don't know whether it can be taken care of straight away or in stages. That is subject to be decided. Let me ask you bluntly. If you were to agree to compensate for reservations for OBCs by increasing the total number of seats, would that increase happen at one go or would it be staggered over a two, three or four year well, process? As I told you, that is a issue which I cannot comment upon at this moment because that is under the examination. So it no. may happen at one go, it may happen over a several series I of can't, years? I can't speculate on it because 
that is not something on which I can I'm free to speak today what about something else will the reservation for OBCs whatever figure your committee decides on will it happen at one go or will it slowly be introduced in stages that also I cannot say because I just told you all these issues are under consideration which means that everything that is of germane interest to the people affected is at the moment under consideration and the government is not able to give any satisfaction to the students no, 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 no. who are is deeply not, concerned that is not the point the government knows what to do will do what is needed but if the government knows what to do why won't you tell me what the government wants because to do because unless the regime is taken i cannot tell you but you can share with me as minister your no, thinking no so in other words we are maintaining a veil of secrecy and the very people who I are i'm not maintaining a veil of secrecy i'm only telling you what propriety allows me to tell propriety you. doesn't allow you to share with the people protesting on the streets what you're thinking well i don't think all the time that that can happen but there are people who feel that their lives and their futures are at stake. Well, they, are, they are undertaking fast and being hyped death. up. It is being hyped up. I don't want to go into that. Do you have no sympathy for them? I have every sympathy. Then you say it's hyped up. Yes, it is hyped up. So then what sympathy are you showing? I'm showing sympathy to them, not for those who are hyping it up. The CPM says that if reservations for the OBCs are to happen, then what's called the creamy layer should be excluded. How do you react to that? The creamy layer issue has already been taken care of by the Supreme Court. But so that was vis-a-vis -vis jobs in employment. What about at the university level? Should they be excluded there as well? Because you are suggesting the answer is yes. Well, that could be possible. It could be possible. So it could be possible that the creamy layer excluded from reservations for OBCs in higher education. It could be, but I don't know whether that will happen actually. What about something else? Many people say that if reservations for OBCs in higher education happen, then the children of beneficiaries should not be entitled to claim the same benefit. Why? So that there's always a shrinking base and that it doesn't proliferate. Well, I don't think that is a very logical way of looking at it. So that's not acceptable to you? No, it's not the logical way of looking at it. Everything doesn't So with the possible exception of the creamy media exclusion, Reservations for OBCs in higher education when they happen will be almost identical to the existing reservations for SCs and STs. Except for the percentage. Except for the percentage. Yes. So in every other way they will be identical. Every other way, yes. Let's take a break at that point, Mr. Arjun Singh. Let's come back and talk about the politics behind this issue and in particular the two questions the media has raised. Did you raise this subject to embarrass the Prime Minister? Or have you raised the subject because in some way you believe it benefits you personally? We'll be back in a moment's time. See you after that.